Dr. Rani El Al Mashat joins us, Minister of International Cooperation for Egypt. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. I want to start out with the impact of COVID-19 first up on the tourism sector because clearly what is necessary is some transparency about how the virus is tracking in various countries. And there have been a lot of clashes on social media and in the press around just how the handling of that is taking place in Egypt. Just give us a sense of where you're at and what travellers can expect if they do come to your country. Uh, good morning and thank you very much uh, for uh, this morning's show. Um, actually, uh, tourism, as you mentioned, is an important uh, pillar of the Egyptian economy. And uh, we had done uh, a lot of uh, reforms over the past uh, two years, uh, reaching to the highest uh, revenues in Egypt's history with tourism uh, as of December 2019. Uh, and that meant uh, that it was uh, an extremely good uh, uh, business opportunity, both for tour operators, hoteliers, and also for employment. And uh, of course, COVID came and it, the, the, the sector that was hit the most globally has been travel and aviation. Uh, what we have been doing uh, currently, and this is something the Minister of Tourism uh, can speak about uh, in more detail, uh, but there has been reach out with WTTC and with UNWTO so that uh, the health standards uh, which are required for travelers are being uh, implemented domestically. Uh, also, uh, air flights uh, have been resumed uh, and there is now uh, a clearer uh, reporting on cases by governorate so that uh, the tourism destinations uh, become clearer, Sharm uh, el Hergada, so that uh, tourists, as they are booking their uh, tickets, uh, can find that information. We've been talking to many tourism operators in the last couple of weeks, and it feels as though there is a little bit of demand for travel over summer, but not necessarily to more exciting destinations. A lot of tourists are playing it safe if they're going abroad or they're mainly staycations. So what are you seeing on the booking front this year? Are you concerned that Egypt may not benefit from a, a spike in tourism if it happens over summer? You know, it's, uh, uh, you know the, 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 the problem with travel today uh, is uh, it's out of the control of any uh, uh, nation. It's really, as you mentioned, uh, our own psychology. Uh, myself, I talk about myself, uh, would I be comfortable even going to Europe or the US or elsewhere? Uh, so I think uh, uh, it's just, uh, uh, you know, a transition uh, that all of us uh, will have to adapt to. Uh, as, uh, you know, we watch uh, uh, the news and watch what WHO comes out with uh, and basically feel more comfortable moving around, moving around even uh, uh, going to restaurants uh, uh, domestically. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's a very unique uh, challenge for uh, all sectors globally, retail as well. Uh, and that's why uh, there's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's for everybody a wait and see. Minister, my last international trip, last time I got on a plane was to Cairo and back, back in February, actually, for, uh, for the International Petroleum Show as well. So it holds a place in my heart as well. But what are the other major problems, apart from COVID-19, uh, that Egypt is confronting at the moment that it needs to overcome uh, to get more tourists back? I think uh, it's, uh, it's time we talk about the opportunities. Uh, you mentioned a very important uh, conference that took place in Egypt, which is... Uh, uh, related to the oil sector. Uh, we have uh, fantastic consortiums that are taking place. And since you attended that show, uh, you would know that uh, the exploration uh, is something that uh, Egypt is very uh, keen on, also the natural gas. Uh, the other uh, issues that are related to how the government has dealt uh, with the socioeconomic impact uh, of COVID, uh, we have now 1.5 million informal workers on uh, uh, the formal uh, books, and that has been uh, helped by uh, a speed up in the financial inclusion uh, regulations related uh, to uh, how fast the central bank also pushed uh, with its monetary policy and other uh, financial inclusion policies. The fiscal policy has also helped uh, several sectors, on t uh, you know, the, 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 the big one being uh, tourism. So there has been uh, a lot uh, to highlight in terms of how the government has dealt uh, with the fallout from uh, uh, COVID. Uh, of course, it is a novel crisis for all countries, uh, but I believe that it has pushed us as policymakers, it has pushed the business community, it has push, pushed civil society and citizens to be quite innovative in the way uh, they think about this. And uh, what is very, very important is that all of us have to think post-COVID. Uh, and that's why through my role as Minister of International Cooperation, uh, we have created multi-stakeholder platforms uh, where our bilateral and multilateral stakeholders convene with line ministers to basically see what the priority sectors are going forward. And therefore, there can be 
you know, the, the, the recovery that comes afterwards with uh, partnerships, which are very, very important, not just uh, with the government, but also with the private sector. So you mentioned natural resources and the blessing that uh, Egypt has with the gas, but it also has a problem with other resources, and uh, that is water, which is perhaps the most important resource on the planet as well. You are Minister of International Cooperation. What hope is there of international cooperation between Egypt and Ethiopia to avert a serious crisis that could get worse from here? Well, I think, you know, these are uh, questions for uh, our, our very capable Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of Irrigation to go through details of negotiations. What we are trying to do uh, as Ministry of International Cooperation is ensure that the mechanization of uh, irrigation for our agricultural projects uh, is, uh, is taken into account, uh, that uh, when we take a look at uh, how uh, we can improve uh, the uh, uh, the uh, technology related to agriculture, related to uh, irrigation, because anyways, uh, this, these are important when we think about environmental uh, impacts and how you want to grow, but at the same time be sustainably, uh, 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 you know, or, or what is now labeled as a green recovery. So these are all very important uh, points that uh, we are engaging in uh, when we think about uh, projects related to irrigation and projects related to agriculture. Of course, agriculture is a key sector globally today because of the food security, uh, particularly given the challenges of COVID. Just, just one more try on that same point, though. I appreciate it. The Minister of Foreign Affairs can handle this as well. But again, do you fear that things are going to overshadow a recovery in Egypt as well? Because we know uh, the importance of this dam to Ethiopia and the ramifications it could have for Egypt, which relies so much on the, the fast flow of the Nile itself. Uh, I, 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 I'm confident uh, that our political leadership and my colleagues in foreign affairs and uh, irrigation are very, very capable uh, of making sure that Egypt's future is safeguarded.